Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a special edition of In the Studio, take number two. We got a mulligan on the first one. Today we're talking all things Star Ladder in this special edition. We are planning on uh, skipping in the studio today as uh, three of our hosts are in Kiev, and they were doing live coverage, as I'm sure most of y'all were watching. I wasn't having that. But yeah, Gods wasn't having it. He said, we don't have days off around here, gosh darn it. He's no. feeling chipper, and uh, well, not a bad idea. So we're going to yeah. talk Star Ladder. We've got a little bit of news to cover towards the end. So it'll be kind of a shorter episode today, and uh, it's just the two of us here in the studio. We've got Roland on production. You can blame him for the production fails. And, um, yeah, we'll have two guests coming on today as well. We'll have Bone7 and Bulba uh, to talk just kind of macroscopically about Star Ladder, discuss some uh, some MVPs, what went wrong, what went, what went right, and there were some pretty interesting storylines. Before we hop right into it, though, guys, remember to give some love to 100TB. Check them out at 100TB.com. They are the title sponsor for this show, and they are an infrastructure service provider with eight premium data centers around the world. They do stuff like dedicated hosting, cloud services, and you guys should check them out. David Parker, what's the good word? Well, Starlight just ended. DK are the champions. That's that's the big thing here. Uh, taking a look at our brackets, our group standings, I mean, you can see what went down, but it was a yeah. uh, it was a big event, the biggest event, and in my opinion, the best event so far of 2014. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. Great matches all throughout. DK are the champions, winning the grand finals very convincingly. They went the entire tournament without dropping a single game as well. Yeah. They were just... Unstoppable. Not just a ser not just a uh, series, but a single game. They two owed their yeah. way to the finals, and they had they had the fast track. One of the first things that I wanted to ask about is that whole winners bracket advantage, because we talked about that on in the studio in past weeks about what's the right format, and we seem to unanimously agree that best of five with a one game advantage is the way to go. But yeah. after watching this, it almost felt like DK had too much of an edge because they played so few games. Meanwhile, you've got Empire who had to grind their way to the top and. I, I don't know if you could make a case that fatigue wasn't a factor. Yeah, I mean, Empire had it tough. They had to play yeah. two best of threes to get there. The one against EG did go three games, although there weren't any mm -hmm. really extremely long and grueling games. But DK was just had more wait, wait time preparation. But yeah, um, but yeah, that's that. But uh, that's well, that's I that. Mean, we we can talk about more of those stuff when we yeah. bring our guests on. Okay, so we got some. So we got some. Cool is it guests. time to bring our yeah, guests? Yeah, yeah. I, I think <laughs> we, we, I want to talk. To, I want to talk to these guys. That's they true. Know, they, know, they know more about what yeah. happened. I want to talk to the guys that weren't casting WPCAs over all yeah. of the epic Star Ladder coverage. I watched a grand total of like four matches. I think, unfortunately, it pains me to say it. I really wanted all to watch nice. it, but I I was watching it on mute <laughs> while I was casting WPC. So yeah. if you go through the vods, there are little updates of oh triple kill for EG. Yep. I had my iPad next to yeah. my computer as well with Star Ladder on while I was casting the inaugural. Did my best, but there's only so much one can do yeah. while casting and watching but bulba bone seven are you boys coming in loud and clear hello hi hey what's up, what's up fellas hey, what's up so good. did you guys watch all of the star ladder coverage um uh, i think i've seen them every 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 game if, uh just my sleep schedule has been totally screwed over the past few days but yeah as much as i could and then um, the nap time, unfortunately, I have to say, the, but my nap time was during the MVP games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, probably a smart that's... plan, to be perfectly frank. Did they win a single game this tournament? I mean, I, you can't blame me. I was so no, tired. I'm like... No. They were it's one like... of two teams to actually take a racks off of DK, though, so... Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it's like Navi EG in three hours, and it's MVP Empire in an hour. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to take a nap, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, boys, your predictions going in, were you guys confident that DK would take it from the very beginning? Who did you think would make it to the finals before the tournament actually started? Uh, before the tournament started, my top three was DK, Navi, and EG. I just went, like, the safe. pretty easy route. Yeah, the safe route. And then, I don't know what Bones was. I think his was around I the was, same. I was hoping that DK Alliance and Navi would... Get the top three because we have future, like lances are gonna play against them soon. So your your Didn't teammate happen. though was playing for EG. Were you not cheering for him? <laughs> I mean, I was cheering for him, sure, but I want to like be motivated to play against like those teams. Yeah, was it sad for you not actually being there uh, with Cloud Nine coming so close in the tiebreakers? Like, what's it yeah, like? Of, yeah, of course. Like, it, oh. like when we lost the tiebreakers, it was like really, really sad. But yeah, I mean, now it's not that sad. I remember, I remember cards I was really close to you, dude. Yeah, I, I, I was going to uh, ask you as well, Bulba. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I didn't forget. I didn't forget. I, mean, I brought it up and Bowen just flamed me, so... Oh well. <laughs> He's like, you would have went there and you would have gotten seventh place next to MVP. <laughs> Whatever. You, you, you guys both. may have been the team that MVP got their win against. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Don't go that far. <laughs> That's too far now. So it is, dude. <laughs> so uh, to be honest, like I thought we're, we... I seen EG play... We played them so many times the past three weeks. We didn't know if 
they're that good or we're just we're bad, you know? But watching them play, they actually I'd say we actually do decently versus them in the early game. Like they win the games versus us, but I'd say we give them somewhat of a challenge. And I think PPD said the same to us as well when I talked to him over the weekend. He's like, you guys give us a hard time compared to some of the other teams here. So, what okay. a nice compliment. Yeah. So um, there are a couple of storylines we want to talk about. And I guess the first is Empire. Because coming in, it seemed like they were hot to trot in the power rankings uh, that we've been talking about in the past few weeks. Empire was that the team, they had that really long winning streak and they were finally uh, uh, de dethroned. This tournament, they were in the bottom two in group stages which means they had pretty much the hardest run possible, and then they finished the tournament in the top two, getting second place. Pretty impressive, huh? Yeah, I mean, they lost to Alliance in the group stage, but then got revenge against them in the playoff bracket, so playoff mm -hmm. bracket went a whole lot better for them. Um, it was be uh, The big thing is there, it's like best of ones, the first two rounds of the loser bracket, so that was like very right. back and forth, and that's where I feel it's whoever shows up when it comes to the playoffs. Like, I don't, yeah. I, mean, I don't think there's much you can change about the format. You've only got so many days, so much time to play matches. Right. But. No, I, I, I'm not suggesting changing the format. I just mean it's a kind of an incredible yeah. storyline to start that far down and then make it all the way to the final. Everyone so. expected IG to beat Empire that I talked to. Like, I did. All the casters, all the teams, all every like yeah. Burning got interviewed and he's like, yeah, IG. We thought IG would win. Go to the WPCA's cast that I'm pretty sure in one of the vods. I'm like, Roland, easy, DK IG, DK takes it. Calling it right here. Next thing that happened, IG lost. Yeah. Well, there go my predictions for this what? tournament. So, so. Let's. I mean, let's let's talk a bit about IG versus Empire. Like, you guys, Bob, do you feel like that was a big so shock that Empire won that, or no? I, I don't think so. I think uh, I said it before as well. I I think it's like if Empire plays any way close to how they play online, I think their team fighting is like of the Western teams right now. It's the best among the Western teams. Like the way they team fight and, and the way they communicate. So I actually I I expected them to beat IG honestly because okay. I think um, if you watch how they play, they have very like. Their picks are very predictable, like you know what they pick, but they play so well as a team. And I think they play better as a team than IG at the moment. So. Yeah. IG look a bit just all over the place and a bit scrappy. I, I actually feel like Newbie from China is almost like a stronger team at the moment. From Oh, actually, with that said, they lost 2-0. I was going to say, they just got upset but, by Black yeah, last but, night, um, so I don't know. Either, like, DK, sure, they look like one of the best teams, possibly the best team in the world right now. But and, like a lot of people like looking at like the old China versus Western scene thing again. But after DK, there's de a definite drop-off when you look at the next few Chinese teams. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Um, what What is it about DK's play? They have this just super... It's just all around solid. I, I can't like... One of the things I can't quite put my finger on, it's not that they push really well, it's just that overall versatility. Is it perhaps that they have such a diverse hero pool? I mean, I saw some stats that Burning played a different hero yeah. every single game that they played and still had They're the most aggressive team, um, which is kind of funny because... Yeah, China has that reputation for yeah. Rice Fest just sitting back and farming. And they farming were the most aggressive team at Starlighter, I would say. I don't. Uh, do you guys, would you guys on Skype agree with that? or? Mm, I think by far. They were always uh, putting the most pressure, I think. Even versus EG, you saw with some, like, they'll, like, EG was ganking a wuss tiny top lane, and then meanwhile, DK is all the way on the other side of the map killing Envy or something like that. You know, like, they're always yeah. doing something on the map, which I don't think other teams are doing as well. They were being the most efficient, honestly, as well, in the games. Yeah. I mean, it's, how do you, how do you draft against that, though? If there's a team where burning, the, you know, the carry player can literally play nine different heroes, and he can play more than that. I mean, Mushi, another guy with just an extremely wide range of, Heroes that he can play. I mean, what what's it like trying to draft against that, Sam? Um, Impo impossible. Hashtag. Possible. I don't know. I, I think <laughs> I think their supports were the best the in the tournament by far. Like just okay. play playmaking wise and also individual skill wise. I think and uh, based on how that like uh, Emma Wise Wisp was so legit. Some of the moves he was making. Yeah. His Wisp has always been phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I, traditionally it was the Western teams who kind of brought Wisp into the metagame, and mm -hmm. China followed suit later on, but MMY picked up that hero very quickly. Well, when you say traditionally, he actually was playing it for uh, Ehome, if you go back to TI2. Oh, so. uh, yeah. That goes, that goes way back. And Wisp was banned out in both game, uh, both of the final matches yeah. by, um, by Empire. With good reason. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he was first banned in the first game. The second game, he was actually fourth banned. So they did have the opportunity to pick him, but... Um, they opted for something a yeah, little bit disruptor different. Disruptor one game, a Rubik yeah. the other, like, he just he <coughs> plays whatever. Um. Yeah. What about Elder Titan? He made an appearance in that last game, and he's really fallen off. I mean, I, I've seen him banned a little bit in the WPC Ace games I've casted over the past few weeks, but uh, in the West, I can't even remember the last time I saw a team have any interest in Elder Titan, at least in games that I was covering. 
What, what's the state of that hero right now? Is I, I mean, he must still be a valuable pick if they just <laughs> won the grand finals with him. Yeah, you guys both play offlane as well. Like, why, why don't you think more teams are picking the Elder Titan? I don't think he's a good hero. You do or don't I, think? I don't think he's a good hero. Oh. I think the, the Ember Spirit uh, ET though is like really, really good. And Ice Ice is like probably the best like offlane ET right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By I far. Think, uh, I think that hero is still strong. He's one of my favorite uh, heroes. I think but, uh, he can be a good mid hero. But, like, I, I still, I, I, still I still like him. Yeah. The problem is that um, he lacks a stun for mid or off lane, so that's a problem. Like you can't solo gank with him, and you can't. It's hard to set up kills, but you can team fight really well with him. And yeah. before you actually harass so much with your spirit, like, it's like sixty percent more damage or something. Mm -hmm. What is now? Uh, kind of ignorable. But with Ember Spirit, you just put a spirit on top of it, and like, it's, it's huge. Yeah. yeah. It does. I think. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I think another thing that uh, DK does better than all the other, they were the best team fighting team in that tournament as well. I think the Star Ladder tournament, I think the two best teams that had the best like team fighting won the yeah. games. Honestly. DK, well, at the same time, like they looked like they were amazing at team fighting, but they were always ahead in items and farm. Like they were forced, like that. Look at that last game against Empire. Like Empire were forced to engage bad fights just to protect their Raxes. So I feel like that's a fair point. DK was good at team fighting, sure. Like, well, fantastic, but like they were always had the upper hand to begin with it felt like yeah. i mean dk Puck picked these lineups that like they had there was a lot of risk in the, what they ran like they had to do it really well i don't know if the alliance game the alliance first dk game i think alliance had a lineup that they could just push five man with but dk every time alliance tried to push they just like out team fought them with uh, and they were actually behind in that game they lost to rax and they still like played so well in the team fights and i think they did the same versus empire in the first game as well in the finals the void just yeah. like they're uh, like one guy's using a spell on another guy, and then they're coordinating spells with each other really well. That's what I noticed. Yeah. So let's talk about Arteezy a little bit. He was the, <laughs> or the e EG, let's e say. Okay, <laughs> EG in general, but yeah. we're going to start with Arteezy. He has, uh, until now, he had that 100% land rate, uh, win rate, that uh, cute number that uh, everyone liked to toss around a little bit. And kind of traditionally, Arteezy's been the big playmaker. He's been that guy that usually dominates the mid lane, usually ganks other lanes, and kind of a, a big playmaker for AG, EG. And in this tournament, he kind of underperformed. But do you guys think it was actually Arteezy underperforming, or was it more other teams just came prepared to shut down the Artor mid lane? Um, Bone? Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't I feel like they even, like, supported, like, uh, yeah, Arteezy I, that I, much. And, like, they, he didn't get, like, his heroes either. But mainly, they didn't even support him that much. Like, he was getting ganked, like, and no one was reacting, really. I don't know. I don't know. When, when we, when I talked a little bit to Zai, and he's like, online, they pick the style, and then they come to the land, and they just pick totally different. Like, um, they were obviously doing well with it, but in that third game, I think if it was an EG online, if this tournament was online, and they would have picked the, they would have picked SF first pick in the first phase, like, guarantee 100%. First it's pick like that, SF. Yeah, it's the third wow. game of a series, or it's the second game. Yeah, third game of the series. It's for all the marbles, and they have radiant. I'm pretty sure they're gonna first pick SF. They would have done that. Okay. Like me and me and Pi were both. P and Pi and I were both watching the game, and we both like. And I think Bone was Bone was watching with us as well. And I'm like, they would pick SF there, but they picked a Luna instead. So that was out of nowhere. Yeah. But uh, they were playing with Eternal Envy. Do you feel like that affected their just drafting and hero selection in general? Like that was one game where he was Lone Druid, which is obviously not hero he's comfortable with. Do you feel like that PPD was approaching the draft in a different way because of the stand-in factor? I think that was a big reason. Um, Envy as well, he told us that like one of the problems was uh, it, there was a mixture of kind of ideas. I think that he was kind of helping influence the draft quite a bit and they had a lot of confidence in his Luna because they won every game with his Luna, I think. And then okay. it comes down to that, and then suddenly they just have a lot of faith in his Luna. And then they picked the Lanaya there, and then they picked the Luna. I still think they had a decent draft, but I'm, I'm pretty sure if they picked online, they would they would have picked the SF first pick. Okay. Like, on the first two picks. Not, me, not really first pick, but in the first two at least. Right. And what about PPD's Treant Protector? That was another one. I, I, I don't know. I, I thought I was going crazy when I heard Merlini say, you know what, maybe they just need to first ban out PPD's tree. I just didn't think I would hear that coming into this tournament. I know PPD's been running that hero a lot, and he's been kind of making a resurgence, but in that Game 3 of Empire versus EG, they actually did, Empire actually did uh, second ban the tree, so they, they denied it. So is 
I don't, how good is PPD's Tramp Protector? Is it really a kind of first band type uh, player hero combo? The hero is so broken, I think. It's, especially with their <laughs> playstyle. Hero like, that hero is ridiculous. Uh, especially the way he's he's by far, I think, the best tree, tree yeah. player in the world. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he, he moves really well with the hero and it's it's like you, this tree gets a haste rune or something, and you just uh, you kill mid lane automatically. <laughs> yeah. You he you, branches pretty hard in the early levels. You you you. I think one thing that EG does well, they focus a lot on is they they secure their um safe lane. Like mm -hmm. you see them pick the Bane Marana first two picks, and the reason they do that they pick the Bane Marana first two picks is because they wanna they wanna protect their safe lane. They don't want to get aggressive tri lane. And that means that their supports have free reign over the jungle and they can do what they want. And that means that also means that they can protect RTZ mid. So one of the reasons they love the Bane Marana so much was because they can just protect the, the safe lane. And with the tree, that's another thing they can do is like, if, if you saw the game where Alliance went aggressive tri lane with Wisp, Tree, and AA, yeah. he went aggressive, they, Alliance went aggressive and they got completely shit on because of the tree. Because of the tree. Do you, oh, well. do you agree, Mr. Seven? Tree Imba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time, like, uh, when when you pick tree and when you know how it works, like, you always win, like, at least two lanes, I think. Because yeah, if going safe lane like is good for you, like, you got a safe lane for sure. And then if they are greedy and you have three, you go aggressive and you still like you're getting ahead. Like, it's it's really good, really good. Like, it's fucking broken hero. Yeah. I don't know. So, D lane. DK did ban out Tree in both in the first ban stage of both games against EG. Wow. That's like they definitely rate the Tree up there as well. Like it, it was not only just Tree and Naga first ban yeah. in both games. They know what they don't want to give Arteezy and PPD. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Respect. And then the Universe Darkseid gets respect banned in the second ban stage, so Yeah. Um who would you guys peg as the MVP of the entire tournament overall? Maybe most, uh, what's the right way to quantify it? Just most impactful player? Um, I don't know, what, who would you guys say? Uh, I think I like MMY. MMY? Yeah, okay. I think so. I, yeah. didn't, like, I didn't watch that closely, the individual players though, so I don't know. It's... I think uh, two players, I think it's Burning and then Always Wanna Fly. I think Always Wanna Fly carried Empire. To the second place. What was what was so big about what Always Wanna Fly did? Like I, I actually missed a couple of the Empire EG games. His, like, uh, his Sand King, like he got so many three or two men uh burrow strikes. Okay. And he set up a lot of like I think he won the game versus EG the second game where they had the third game, I mean they had a uh, they had the Invoker and they had the Gyro as well. He he won them that game. And he also won the game for versus them when they were playing versus IG in the morning. So Okay. Okay. Um, now looking at two teams that didn't perform too well, Navi and Alliance, they were the kind of the two big name European teams, and uh, three of the four European teams got knocked out from the loser bracket in the first two rounds. So it was not a good showing from the European scene. But what do you feel went wrong with Navi and Alliance? I mean, was it similar problems, or was it two entirely separate things? Why did these two teams just disappoint? I don't know. It seems like they didn't know how to like pick that though. To be honest, like their drafts were really. <laughs> Like when it was the first game against TG, Navi played phenomenal. Like yeah. they were getting, they got massively outpicked, and then like ten minutes in, they start like Voss plays amazing until he throws. But everyone plays like Funny played amazing as well. Like I don't know, I, I really don't know what's up with their picks right now. Because thought... online they kind of picked okay before. I don't know, it's land and everything. It's like everything changes. Oh well. Yeah, in the D two CL finals versus Cloud Nine, they like completely, they. They played. They picked so well versus you guys. I don't know. I mean, maybe we just like played. Uh, picked, like, okay, the last game is fucking whatever. But what the, the other games game? it showed. Dude, they got the fucking three. They got the three in that game. We lost because of that. Three op. Oh. Well, yeah. And, and then uh, I think the Navi IG game as well was they got outpicked that game. I think they picked yeah. the Storm Spirit after the at after IG had Dragon Knight and Centaur, and I don't think that was a good pick. I remember you saying they should have picked Tinker or something there. Yeah, I thought they should have picked Tinker because okay. this Tinker tree is really obnoxious to play versus. Because Tink, if they if you ever you march it and then if they ever do chip damage on the on the on the tower, you just heal it up when they're the wave is dead. It's like really stupid. I think Fnatic ran it up once versus us. It was, it was really obnoxious. Okay. Yeah, IG had some pretty scary gank in that game. They ran Eventual Spirit, Dragon Knight, Centaur, Enchantress, and Marana. That's that's pretty potent in terms of some mid game fighting and. A lot of crowd control as well. Yeah. And yeah, Navi, they they ran the, the Triant, Luna, 
Storm Spirit. Was a tree. Yeah, they rent Puppy Tree and uh, Timbersaw and a Dazzle. So, I mean, at face value, not the worst draft I've ever seen. That was seen, the game but... where Chuan played amazing on Enchantress. So yeah. he, he, he went big. He got an early gank on uh, Dendi at mid and just controlled oh, okay. the game so hard. Um, and the the actual the DK was a really good pick against the Treant because it just it tears through the Treant living armor really fast and mm -hmm. the big the key thing with that IG draft is was, was they took all the IG T1 towers in one full go like they would go to a tower the tower would go down and there was no chance for the Treant armor to be able to get used to keep towers alive so it was just continually a thing where IG just kind of snowballed out of control. Everything okay over there, boys? <laughs> <laughs> it's Romania, dude. It's no Jesus. So. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> like, okay, glad glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that is one of the issues with tree. If you have a really aggressive pushing strat where you have like a DK and an enchantress, the living armor buys you a little bit of time. But as long as you can flash push the towers, it doesn't. Yeah. You can kill it within one cycle of living armor. He works really well against strats that don't push as quickly. Or they want to just chip damage here and there. Um, the big problem with that Navi draft was I think they picked Timbersaw. I just think Timbersaw takes too long to. <laughs> the problem come is they picked Timbersaw. You don't I like Timbersaw? Uh, I, I like think Timbersaw there. Because Timbersaw is good. Though. Yeah, I think Timbersaw is good. No, the problem Timbersaw is, that, is the, the problem with this is they. I think that they picked Timbersaw to counter the the centaur, but they. I think they should have went aggro tri lane with the Treant, and they should have put Timbersaw safely in versus the centaur. It would have been a Venge Enchantress Mirana tri lane. You think they could have? I, I guess they have dazzled tree. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could just sit there. I think you just sit there in that tri lane and you not die, okay. and then you let the you let the Timbersaw completely shit on the Centaur, which it does. Like yeah. Centaur can't do anything in lane versus Timbersaw. It's like yeah. it's like one of the worst matchups. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. But, I but, yeah, I agree. But instead, the Timbersaw was like really really poor, and also the Storm Spirit pick. I'm, I'm I don't, I don't know. It's like, <clears throat> that's really the hardest one of the hardest games to play Storm Spirit versus. I think Dendi tried his hardest, but. Then yeah, he always well. tries his hardest. Well, it's Come like on they're now. just always as five pushing. Like he, like he, he did get a few good kills. Like there was one fight at the T1 mid tower where they finally looked like Navi were getting back into it, mm. but um, it was it was not to be. Um, I mean, looking at IG further, like a lot of people criticizing Luo. Do you guys feel he kind of disappointed, especially that one Slada game? Uh, was it the one versus Empire? Yeah, right with the Shadow Fiend. Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know what happened in their team. I think it's like. You play bad at the start, and then you get flamed, and then people don't trust you. Yeah. And it makes your confidence go down. You're gonna play even worse, and what? Who knows whatever personal issues he had or stuff like that. So the draft was still like there was so many empire heroes that were good at dealing with Slada as well. Was the other big thing at least at least for me. Like you have Shadow Demon to purge him through BKB. You have Ventral Spirit with the swap, Clockwork Hook Shots. Uh, there was four staffs as well up. So it was like a really tough game uh, to be playing a Slada. I feel as well. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, some of the mistakes he made were not like the starter centric, like uh, not BKBing. That was kind of game losing because IG yeah. actually played really well. They were coming back, and then there was a move where he blinked on mid, and then he didn't BKB. And there's another move where uh, I think YYF lassoed the Luna, and he didn't use that amp on him. Oh, he, he used amplify on the wolf besides him. Yeah, so that was oh. kind of game losing as well. So, yeah. but I think it's like a team fault though. When the, when first he jumped and he didn't BKB, like he jumped like in front of everyone, like. Everyone was like a second and a half too late to like be there where, where he jumped anyway, so it was some something forced, I don't know. Yeah. Was it, like just bad atmosphere in the team, that's all I think. I don't know if it's his mistake only like. Okay. So I, I don't know what pressure he faces from his team or whatever, but the poor guy is gonna uh, that, I mean yeah. It's hard to play like that. Yeah. He's he's had some really solid games overall over the last couple months, like in some of the other tournaments. And I feel that's where it's like you can. I mean, he's not the only one who had a bad tournament. I mean, you can look at some of these other players, Arteezy with his self astral imprisonment. There was all kind of mis those mistakes. You put high pressure situation, there's, you make mistakes. Like that's that's what's going to happen. You, it's never flawless play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was just. <laughs> did you guys watch the interview that they did with Charlie? Did anybody listen to that? I, I did. I wish I didn't. I heard it was quite humorous. I, I, I actually missed it. I saw it, but I fell asleep. <sighs> I wish I had that 10 minutes of my life back. It was that bad? <laughs> it was It was bad. Oh, man. Uh, why, why did they interview Charlie? I don't know. They, they, apparently, they were getting pretty desperate for people that's, to interview. That's always, a, that's always a good question, Sam. <laughs> did you see it, why? Sam? Was it as bad? I, I don't know what happened. I, I heard something oh, about I, laxatives. That's all I heard. I saw the oh. last minute, and I don't know. Like Charlie is just a clown. I don't know why. You, yeah. Like he's a good manager and all, but yeah. Those great ice, 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 and burning interview. I that did was, see that, that one. That, I I just liked the the opening was the best part. Hello, I am Burning's bitch, and this is Burning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was. Yeah. The, I gotta I gotta start doing interviews that way. 
Hello, I'm Sam's bitch, and we've got Sam on the line. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to watch that one. I didn't. See it <laughs> it's good. It's worth a watch. Uh, as Starlighter as a whole, like looking at the tournament, like do you feel like this is one of the biggest, most prestigious tournaments on the Dota 2 circuit at the moment? Like, is this like a really big deal? DK won this, so, like, going up to TI. I mean, not even looking at like playing well before TI, but looking at Starlighter on its own. Is this? I mean, it's in my opinion the biggest tournament so far in 2014. Uh, do you guys oh, feel it's like oh. a really prestigious title? I don't think so, because as, as Luminous has said, there's no Cloud9 there. So. No. <laughs> oh. Dude, there's, they, they didn't qualify. Yeah, I mean, they had yeah. a chance. Yeah. They were in Star Ladder, they just weren't at the Star Ladder Land Finals. <laughs> but no Cloud9, no, no good tournament, sorry. But uh, to be real, I think it was... Yeah, I mean, the next, yeah. the next two months as well, there's going to be a bunch of other ones. As, yeah. So, so. But this yeah. was by far, like... I, I didn't think uh, people really knew what style was the best, and... I don't think you can really call it DK style China style, to be honest. So. It's, it's DK. It's almost it. It reminds me more of the SEA Dota style than the Korean, Chinese Dota style. Like if you look at how the yeah. SEA teams were playing, uh, I mean, Orange were known for picking all kinds of heroes. Mushi played a different hero every game, and they Orange played really aggressive. It's it's more what DK are doing at the moment than what Chinese teams used to do. Yeah, I, I've noticed a lot of even the top tier Chinese teams. Like today was it uh, Vici? Roland, you have to remind me. It was the last series, the Vici versus Tong Fu, and. You know, Vici's up by like 20,000 gold, 30,000 experience. They're the heavy favorites against Song Fu, and they still can't seal the deal. They spend another yeah. 25 minutes just kind of running around farming, afraid to take the risk to move up to the high ground, and they want to have all these safe plays. And DK don't fall into that trap. Even the, the other top-tier Chinese teams get stuck in that trap, and DK seems to have a better handle on, okay, when can we actually break high ground? When can we be more aggressive and roll the dice a little bit? They seem it's to be more have, comfortable. It's because they have 71, dude. The guy's yeah. so legit. Yeah. LG, wait, so what was it? Too? 71? Oh, the EHOME LGD, I'm yeah. sorry, it wasn't yeah. Tong Fu. That's yeah, bad. 71, he's been, this guy's, like, he led EHOME to, to victory in yeah. 2010. He's, I think it's something that's really underrated, is the impact and importance that a, a coach can actually have on the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, have you guys, like yourselves, ever considered getting that, uh, that, I guess, coach factor coming into either of your teams? No, EG actually has a coach. Uh, you know Clairvoyance? Oh, Clairvoyant. Yeah, Clairvoyance got promoted to coach. Is that an is official that, thing? Is that serious? Are you trolling? Being, I, 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 I can't tell. I don't tell. think it's an official thing, dude. It's not an official thing, but... Uh, <laughs> not in the same sense that, like, 7-1 is the coach no, for DK. I mean, no, not the coach, but you know, just the, the theory crafter. I think it's more important to have the coach actually there at the live events to, like, <laughs> be looking at the other teams and have, like, a general... Might be important, yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like just for, like, your general, like, online matches theory crafting stuff, like, more like, a lot of that can come from your draft or your captain, but... Actually, at a live event, I, the coach can kind of look at things from a fresh perspective. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Ice 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 played a lot of Invoker this tournament as well. Yeah. Which is scary. It was he's, always he's the invo scary invoker, invoker Centaur. They had Invoker plus Centaur yeah. in a, a lot of the matches working together. Yeah. I feel Centaur is one of those heroes which is suddenly teams are realizing is the best offlaner in the game, maybe? He's been first pick, first ban, I think, every Bone. WPC match I've casted over the past two Bone years. Bone hates that hero. Who does? You hate that uh, hero too, dude. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's like some some lanes you can't get anything versus uh, Centaur, but like DK, like they put so much pressure on the other lanes that Centaur always got something. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Like I don't think he fits f for most styles. Like I don't think he'd fit that well with like the farming play style of, of some teams. Like if EG picks two core and they go Midas on both their carries, I don't think he'd fit that well. But he needs a lot of space to get the blink because and the level six. You can't really jungle with him until you get the Tranquil Boots on level 5 and stuff like uh, that. Ah, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. He usually finds his way into Tranquil Boots pretty easily, though. I, I think the best thing about him is a uh, late game when you stun someone. Mm -hmm. where you, when you sheep someone, you have the Stampede. and It's just like, you, it's so, if you have a good coordinated team and you, have, you Stampede well, it's like you win these fights really easily. Yeah. It's a bit weird, though, because like, Center has like a 0.5 seconds animation time for his hoof stomp and... I was watching the Empire game, like, Puck never, like, reacted with, uh, like, everything is a bit messier in these LAN environments. People don't, like, not on their game with their reactions and stuff, so, like, it feels like it should be really easy to, like, hit those spells, but, yeah. I don't know. You know when you're set up and stuff, I guess, is part of that, so... I mean, a team, and the team like Empire, they go into the Grand Finals having just played two best of threes. Uh, do you feel like that, that's also a factor, just being tired going into the Grand Finals? Maybe, but, like... I don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't think so though, because like <laughs> everyone stayed up and watched. Like so, I mean, I think Empire might have an edge there. I don't know. I think they were hyped up. Like they were. Yeah. If you watched how happy they got after winning, like that's one of the things I liked about a lot. Like they're yeah, they're really happy after each win. And I after beating EG, 
and most people probably thought EG would win that. I'm pretty sure yeah. they were really, really happy. So they were going into the finals pretty hyped up, I think. I think when, it honestly helped them. Yeah, when they were winning games, I think one of the games against, it was, was the last game against Alliance or something, one of their players was like almost in tears, it looked like, just because he was so happy and excited having just won. It was, yeah. it was one of those really refreshing things to see, because I think if you look at a lot of the teams like Na'Vi, DK, and Alliance, like these guys win tournaments and have won LAN tournaments, so for them it's like less of a novelty factor. For Empire, this is the first big it's chance big to prove deal. themselves. So. Yeah. It's true. There's Yo. something to be said for that. Sup, we've got another caller on. Uh -oh. we've, got, we've got Lumi joining in. What's up, Lumi? Oh. What's up, guys? Um, What's up, dude? You'll be happy that he's here, okay. Bone Seven. He's a full uh, pushing Cloud Nine should have been at the LAN. <laughs> oh. I mean, I think you just had Cloud Nine there just to uh, have people scream against them. <laughs> and then they'll they'll know that you know they're fighting for second place at Star Ladder. But yeah. That's cool. So, so what what do you feel like happened, Lumi? Like DK Chinese Dota is is it truly back in action now? I wouldn't say Chinese Dota is more like DK Dota, right? Like IG no. was there. IG wasn't even. They were top four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Top five. Let's forget. Let's not forget the team that wasn't there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So. How good is DK here, Lumi? Let's say TI3 is next, or TI4 is next weekend or the weekend after. I mean, is, is this just an easy win for DK? Do they have some secret trick to, that the others haven't figured out? What is it about DK that, I mean, they, this, was, this seemed to be a pretty easy effort for them. They didn't lose a single game. I think if TI4 is play online, that, which makes no sense, I think DK won't be as good. Okay. Not, not to say that they play worse online, it's just the other teams play much better online, like Empire being one of those teams, in my opinion. Okay. So I, I just think that DK is miles ahead in terms of LAN experience compared to the other team. I think there are some people out there that don't believe there is such thing as like a LAN experience or LAN uh, yeah. <laughs> clutchness, but I personally think there is. So I just think that DK with their player being, you know, like Mushi last year carrying the entirety of Orange, yeah. And then we know, you know, all the other rest of the DK members have such Whoops. long history being at, you know, the height. So yeah. I just think that DK has more LAN experience. Um, there is very few teams right now, aside from Navi Alliance and Cloud9, uh, that have the similar level of LAN experience or performance. Okay. So Yeah, because once um, Navi Alliance got knocked out, and like, sure, La Navi Alliance have the same LAN experience, like the top three teams... The best results of any of those players at TI were all DK players. Lamb and MMY were both in the TI1 Grand Finals, and then Mushi and Ice 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 were both also uh, top three at TI. Mushi getting third place at TI3, Ice 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 getting third place at TI1, and doing, I think, getting, what, fifth, sixth place at TI2 as well. So mm -hmm. looking at the other two teams, Empire as well as EG, I think seven of those players have never even played at an international, so... Yeah. Do you, is this something like Bulbear and Bone Seven? Do you guys agree? Like you, that land experience factor is a huge factor as well. Bone Seven doesn't go to lands. <laughs> oh. He is next weekend. He is next weekend. Oh, yeah, he is. It's, 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 it's in the city. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's a, it's in like <laughs> go to that land. It's like a drive down. Get a taxi down there. Never man. I'm gonna go with like Jana next month. So where you are. But uh, I think it matters. To some extent, I'm not sure. Honestly, it's. I think they're more. They're. I think th those teams are the most confident as well. I think that's a big reason. Is like, I think yeah. DK and EG. I think DT, DK and EG were the most confident in this land by far, mm -hmm. like of their own skill and stuff. And Navi is always all. Anyways, they're always confident, right? Like, confidence is kind of Navi's undoing, though. Unlike other teams where confidence helps them, for sometimes for Navi, it's like, eh, it's we're gonna win it. Don't worry about uh, it. They get in and realize it's a little harder than perhaps they had. Uh, yeah. First anticipated. I want to, uh, you in particular, Lumi, what do you think about the way uh, the winner, the double elimination bracket is set up where DK had all that time to rest, watch their opponents, and then Empire, they had to grind their way into the grand finals today. How big of an edge does that give DK, or do you think it's even an edge going the way of Empire because they're warmed up and in the zone? I actually think it's a definite edge to, um, to be able to rest, like knowing that you're going to be waiting the grand final, uh, DK. Mm -hmm. and that the other team have to play, and you get to watch them play and how they draft. Right. I think the fact that you're watching gives them give you the edge. That's why, personally, I'm not a big fan of the whole winner bracket gets a one-game advantage. I think you already have enough of an edge to not play those back-to-back uh, -back best of threes, and then okay. you, know, you can watch and wait. I, I miss tournaments doing single elimination playoffs. Yeah. That's my preferred format. So I know a lot of single limb. Yeah, just I think every match peasy. is just more important. Like you look yeah. at like winner bracket match, it's like well, even if you lose, you drop down to the loser bracket. So for teams, every, like you obviously want to win, but for viewers, it's like well, 
it's not they're actually knocked out of the tournament. Like I, that's yeah. one thing I really like about some of the like I think ESL tournaments. Like EMS is always single elimination, and I assume the ESL one will be single elimination. I'm not sure of the format for the land finals, yeah. but I hope it is. I think there needs to be more single limb tournaments. Uh, MLG had it mm-hmm. uh, for their playoffs at least, so. Yeah, and I'm, then you don't have that rest break advantage, really. Yeah, I'm coming around. I used to think double elimination was the end all be all of formats, but I'm starting to think single elim is just a little yeah, more I mean, something about just knowing that it's all on the line. It's so easy to translate to the viewer. It's very easy to say, okay, they win this or they go home. There's yeah. none of this. Well, they'll win this, but then they'll be seated into the first round where they have to win a best of one, and then maybe they'll. It's just then you don't have any of this BO one loser yeah, bracket and stuff as well. Which I mean, I, BO one I think is okay, but I think. I think the BO ones they used in this bracket were appropriate, but it still is a little yeah. bit. It's too. It's just Dota's not a best of one game. That's all it comes down to. Best of ones are never going to be I, yeah, ideal. Yeah, I mean, for the for the like the first round of the lose brackets, like okay, Rocks Empire MVP versus Navi, like BO one, sure, let's get these matches over with. But when you get down to Alliance versus Empire to mm-hmm. see who's going home and Navi versus IG, these are series. It's el- eliminations on the line, and you're thinking like this should be a, a best of three. Like that to me was like, man, Navi versus IG, best of one to decide who's getting eliminated. Yeah. It's, but at the end of the day, there's only so many hours, uh, yeah, yeah. hours on the clock, and yeah, that unfortunately that's what it comes down to sometimes. Lumi, who is your MVP for the tournament overall? Most impactful here or uh, player? Um, I didn't get to watch some teams' games. For example, MVP Phoenix. Uh, I didn't see a lot of IG's game, but of the games I watch, uh, Meg is my MVP player, especially on that last game. Even though they lost, like the amount of three man impels he hit on his Knicks was absolutely ridiculous. Mm-hmm. He was able to hit them without Blink Dagger as well. I think the, the reason the fights even looked close was the fact that he hit those impels. Uh, so okay. even though it was a losing effort, I think Mag played really well. What about Universe? Was anybody else impressed by Universe? Oh yeah, Universe when he made that vacuum and yeah. follow up from Zai. Yeah, that yeah. was an amazing that, game. That, that was the that was Alliance the best EG game. game too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, I think, I mean, I admittedly didn't watch that many full matches, but I actually watched that game and I think that was that was the best play of the tournament. Th- that was way. just that that whole game, like the yeah. second half was just intense, and there were so many times where it's just like we're 60 minutes in, EG's gonna win, and then all of a sudden Alliance would hold, and it's just like I don't know how long this is gonna go on. I don't know who's gonna win. It's just those are the games that you live. As for. much as people are talking about EG throwing the game because they were the ones ahead, I think Alliance threw it so much harder later on. Alliance, I feel yeah. like we're in such a position where it was so hard to lose, and they were just a couple really bad they, they should have won that game yeah Lines. i don't i feel like eg were never like eg were always like early on they were ahead and worth throwing away a lead but it was never because like eg should have won but alliance definitely there was a moment where i was like 99 percent alliance should win this game i never had that feeling for eg yeah okay. i think a problem was that uh bulldog wasn't last wing the luna he was last wing artesi a bunch of the times in the fights and i oh, think no he should have luna and not 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 in the, some of the fights there was no last one the Luna and then there was this really one there was this bad fight where I think PPD disrupted the Luna near the secret shop yeah and I think Loda misclicked or something and he walked next to the disruption instead of killing oh. Loda from the hill he got yeah, the it arrow like up, it set up the arrow nicely for him like but no that, no he started with the arrow then came back and the yeah, disruption yeah. was there yeah I think it was a was. misclick or something because yeah, yeah, yeah. he yeah I was watching his player perspective and he he misclicked instead of I think it was a clicking the ground but he clicked the ground or something oh dang. And then he didn't have buyout. And then yeah. and then the fight after that, the very last team fight, he accidentally leapt forward into a rax where he got disrupted. And like the disruption to losers and the rax is like completely blocked him in and he died to like this he died from full HP to a shadow demon practically in that last yeah. fight. So Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was a really unfortunate moment. Like I know Lloyd was very uh, I mean he he looked at that and like I think he was very emotional about that, so he knows. But he, he was owning that game. Oh yeah, so. he played he played amazingly well, but like Mjolnir's like the best item in the game. Oh. Mjolnir's pretty darn good right now, I have to admit. Yeah. Was yes. there any Wraith King showing in Star Yeah, Letter? there, there was. Uh, EG ran it as a support one game. Um, Luo. Luo won. Luo played a carry one game. but Okay, because we've been seeing, uh, again to reference WPC, that's all I've been watching for the most part, and there's been a lot of Wraith King, and I don't what, what do you, I don't get it. Can somebody clue me in about Wraith King? Is, like, is he a good pick? Is he a crap tier pick? Or, like, is he better as a carry or a support? Where does he fit in right now? Because... As far as I've noticed, he's been very hit or miss in terms of results. I mean, he's good. He's tiny as OP, right? Like, 8 seconds cooldown, 2 seconds cast, two second, I mean, 2 seconds stun rather than slow. Mm-hmm. You can dodge it, though. I mean, if he, if he dies, he's like a thousand. I mean, like, if I you know. die, people can run away. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like a chronosphere. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that was the really nice buff to him, because his slow used to be 50%, and the upgrade to 75%, it's basically a full slow, because 75% percent slow, unless you have over 400 like movement speed, it's a maximum it cap, maximum yeah. slow. It hits the, the slow cap. Whereas a 50% slow never really quite did that, so... The slow buff definitely was what made him viable, I think. Yeah, the slow buff is good. I mean, it once he hits level 16, it's only a minute cooldown, so it's like, you can... He always has basically an Aegis, but like a level, like, 240 seconds is, like, a ridiculous cooldown. I mean, if it was yeah. shorter, it might be broken, but he just... I, I don't know. I mean, is he better as a carry or a support? That's, if, that's if he's my carry, I think he needs to be in a dual core, yeah. where he goes the Blink and Blade Mail and the owner build that yeah. Envy likes, and then you have, like, a Shadow Fiend mid or a TA mid. That's good. And if your support, good. if your support, you just run it like how EG runs it, and I think that's good as well. So okay, okay, all right. I guess that answers my question. I, I think it's because like this, this, the reason it fits it like these, these some of the teams just prefer those tanky supports. Yeah. Like uh, this tree. Like I know Roxkis prefers it a lot, and EG's been loving it as well. Like if you notice EG supports, and the majority of the games they win, PPD and Zai are playing these really tanky supports as well. Yeah. You yep. can't really die. Yeah, so. tree's pretty tanky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, should we take a break here and then come back? We've been going for a while. Do we want to? Yeah. Do we have any more talking points, guys? Is it time for a, a quick commercial break and then we'll come back and and hit some news? Is yeah, there sure. any any stone uh, left unturned uh, for Star Ladder? Yes. Uh, Envy uh. Bone wanted to flame Envy or something. Oh yeah. What? Bone, you want to you want to flame? Oh no Envy? no, Envy played really well. Just, but that build though, last game, holy sh. <laughs> uh, that that build, I hate that build. I gotta say, like. What when did he do? Screen. Mask of Madness, uh, oh, Midas. Uh, that was that was game running that build. No, Mask of Madness, uh, Midas, Brown Boots. I got so mad. Oh my god. It can Watching be a games. good build, but they really punished the green. I mean, there were a few times where he had Mask of Madness on and they caught him, and they just, I mean, hundred hundred to zero in in two seconds. I think he, he died that. from a gyrocopter like uh, yeah. barrage, like. Well, I'm surprised gyrocopter carry worked. That was the I think only game we saw gyrocopter in the tournament for. It's the only one that I noticed. Yeah. Jarrah's like disappeared. Yeah. His win rate is abysmal this patch. It's yeah. like 30 or 35 or something. I haven't checked. What happened? Recently, I hear it used but... to be legit. Yeah, well, guys, what happened to Gyrocopter? Uh, I think he's just so easy to gank. Like, I, I guess EG just didn't gank them that game. I think one of the problems was that they had two core heroes that went Midas. Yeah, they, yeah they tried to just go super green mode. They had Midas TA and Midas Luna with that... Uh, Mask of I mean, Madness as well. Obviously, you let a hero farm for 30 minutes with no contention, and he gets all the ancient stacks he can't, and gets no pressure at all. He's going to rape. Excuse the language, but it's like you, you pressure this gyro, and like, I, I, if Envy went treads to drums, like the second game, I'm yeah. pretty sure. And he went and pressured the. Because Universe got so much experience top lane. If, they, if he just went and pressured the lane, the top lane with Universe, I'm pretty sure like the gyro would have been kind of screwed. Yeah, so on the point of Gyro stats, uh, in 6.8, uh, in competitive, he has a 36% win rate over 99 games. That's a, that's a pretty big sample, so that's pretty abysmal. Silent has played him the most by far, uh, and he has a decent win percent. Silent is 7 and 3. That's probably because Empire match. have a good win percent, though. Yeah, that's You look at that, it's like that's Empire win like 80% of their matches. And so. Burning played him three times, and okay. they're sitting 2 and 1. Mm -hmm. Envy's played him five times, so a little bit here and there, but it was nice to see Gyrocopter actually... Do something, yeah, you know? Yeah. Come in and just not get steamrolled. Yeah. But Lumi, you're a big theory crafter. What what happened to Gyro? Lumi? Um oh. not too sure, actually. <laughs> okay. okay. That's it, yeah. No, not too sure. Alright. So alright, we'll have a quick break and then we'll be coming back and we have a few more talking points before we uh Okay. Move towards the, the end portion of this episode of In the Studio. So we'll be back, guys. Don't go anywhere. The conversation will resume after this short break. <laughs> 